Let's talk about how religion and superstition is keeping Africans poor. We are really into superstition. If somebody is making it, instead of us finding out how they did it or how hard did he work, we automatically jump into the spiritual realm and assume that that person acquired that money through some black magic stuff. I remember I was in the news not long ago, yeah, news. And somebody sent me a link on Facebook that, hey, you in the news or whatever. I'm like, oh, wow, interesting. I did an interview with Jasmine Ama on YouTube. I ended up there. And it was very interesting reading these comments, what people were saying about me. People were saying all kinds of stuff like, hey, I should show them the way to the Malam and all that. And in my head, I'm like, wow, this is very sad. And this happened more than you think. I mean, I've heard many stories of people who've like made it and then people automatically ascribe it to this person having been to the Malam instead of actually finding out what that person did because if we look in the West and all these people are making money nobody is you know analyzing the spiritual realm of where they went to they actually did something physical to get there right they did something physical through hard work they might be you know mistreating employees and not paying people well to get there whatever it is they did something that was not spiritual related but when we come on this side people put way too much emphasis on spirituality if somebody has made it that person did it through hard work for the most part. I don't know anything about the superstition and the spirituality part here with regards to acquiring money. However, I do know that whatever you hold in your mind that you can achieve and call it superstition, juju, whatever, it all comes down to belief. Whatever you believe you can do and you work towards it, then God will open the way for you. And that brings me to religion. People have given away their powers to the churches in Africa, unfortunately. People are brainwashed and indoctrinated to the point where Pastors could step on people's belly so that they can give birth. <laughs> Doing the most insane stuff, and you cannot believe that people actually believe this stuff. Back in the days, way back in the days, you know, when Christianity came around, I'm not trying to get too religious here, but people used to go to church on Sunday. That was the case. But now, in my house, I can hear people praying from Monday to Friday. You hear churches all around. You see churches like the stores. Every block you see it. Instead of people going to work, working on something that will change their lives, you know, and usually like the most desperate people go to this stuff. Instead of working hard, God helps those who help themselves. And in the Bible, God was busy creating the universe the first six days and the rest of the seventh day. Hence, we were going to church on the seventh day, which was a Sunday and was always the case. And now, people are going to church basically like it's work every day. It's very fucking sad. Bring your last cities or dollars and God will reward you more. As the saying goes, I have tried my best to decipher this and I cannot wrap my mind around how people could be so blinded by real facts and data and also looking back. So back in the days, you used to go to church on a Sunday. That's what it was. So does that mean like everybody back then is going to hell because they weren't going to church on Tuesdays and Mondays and Wednesdays? You know, and people were working hard. People did not go to the church and abdicated all their responsibility to the pastor. You know, in Ghana, pastors even fast on behalf of other people. They fast for you. So you buy the provision for the pastor and then they will fast for you. People believe this stuff. I find it very, very sad. It's holding us back. Instead of people living in the real world and doing the basic common sense stuff. They ascribe everything to the spiritual realm, hence superstition, going to pasta that's making them false promises, and, and the list goes on. It is just very sad. Very, 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 very sad. We have so much potential as Africa. We do, we have so much potential, but we have to work for it. We have to work. If you look at Dan Kote. Africa is uh, full of opportunities. And I think what we did was to actually to harness fully the opportunities that, uh, you know, we met on the ground. I mean, you don't have to be that brilliant, man. Just look at the people who made a difference in Africa. And look, just, just check them out. Are they going to church from Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? They're not doing that. They're busy working. It's work. Physical work in the real world, that's going to change your life. God help those who help themselves. It's not going to Bible studies, you know, 24-7, seven days a week. It's not going to save you. God help those who help themselves in the physical realm. Start something that's practical. Be pragmatic about it. Have a plan and work towards something and God will reward you accordingly. So it is a huge problem here. It's a huge business. I want to live long and do good for the world. So I'm not going to get too deep into it, but it is just sad. It pisses me off. And I hope that one day people wake up and live their life in the real world and don't automatically think that somebody has to save them in a spiritual realm and give them the easy way out. Because there is no easy way out. And when you see somebody doing well, 
you must analyze them and find out how they did it and that's something we don't do here you automatically ascribe like a name that something you know horrific like oh they're doing drugs they are doing this they are doing this try to find out how they did it how did they start you know the castle purple guy he started his entire company from shushu small amount of money like a thousand dollars back then if that and that guy is fabulously rich today and he did all of that through hard work and time that's what we don't have now now because of social media which is also affecting us in africa people don't have time and when you're building a business which is what you need in africa because nobody's gonna pay you well here it takes time the power of compounding it takes time if you're doing what you're supposed to do you're working hard you show up every day and you put in the work with time there is a mathematical equation for this if you keep reinvesting your money you do what you're supposed to do you stay disciplined diligent at your work and keep building your business 20 years from now 30 years from now 15 years from now you will not believe what you've accomplished the problem that we have other than religion is we don't like to reinvest in africa when people make money they immediately start chasing girls and people don't reinvest their money to get big because you have to reinvest it and i'm not trying to get into business as of things now it is just sad you got to work hard you got to understand the economy that you're in god helps those who help themselves be wise i hope you wake up and join us in the real world. This concludes the video, why superstition and religion is keeping Africans poor. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, can you do so? Like this video as it helps with the algorithm. Comment, let me know what you think. And until next time, my friends, legendary. Peace.